Okay, so in terms of solutions to um, wasted water or unsustainable use or inefficient use of irrigation systems, there's three types of irrigation systems that improve um, loss of water or evaporation of water before it hits the crops. The most efficient is drip irrigation. You need to know this. The mo you need to know that there's three types and you need to know that the most efficient is drip irrigation. It's 90 to 95% efficient. That means there's very little water loss. If you go to gravity flow, it's 60 to 80% and center pivot ap approximately 80%. So the order would be drip, center, gravity, really, if you wanna look at it, because this one, if they use low pressure, um, sprinklers it'll be the same efficiency as drip but all i want you to know for the test is that drip irrigation is the most efficient and the three types of alternative irrigation systems so here's how they work drip irrigation basically you're going to have these pipes below um ground and the tubes deliver water directly to the plant so it's kind of like a um you know it's just direct hitting in this case the gravity flow um you're going to have some kind of nearby water system. So the water is going to go in and out. So again, you're going to eliminate loss or needing to tap into a, a extended period. And with the, um, the center pivot, as you could see here, it's basically circulating around. It's going to be a handle in the middle and the sprinkler circles around the crops, which usually works with um, contour cropping, which we're going to talk about in our next unit. <clears throat> Sustainable toilets. Um, Obviously, the reason for this unit is uh, water conservation, but you're going to save a lot of money on water because since water, toilets use up the most water in your home per gallon, let's say, then your water bill is higher. So if you could save on the per gallon flush, one of the ways to conserve uh, water with toilets is less water per flush. So that's easy. And then another one is called waterless toilets. And you don't have to know the mechanism of this, but... The waterless toilets basically use a mechanism that pushes down your waste and the waste kind of goes into some kind of like a container that breaks it down. And they say you could use this waste to fertilize your crop. So it would be organic waste. Another way is reusing the water. So here you have a picture of a sink and basically you're gonna use that waste water or that gray water to power the toilet. Um, and then again, it's gonna have some kind of system to get rid of the waste and there's another function for the um, liquid waste too but you don't have to know that avoid leaks is definitely something you're going to be able to do to conserve water leaks remember if you go back to usage you have toilets you have you know showers leaks is up there on the the most used water so you want to try to avoid uh, any system using water unnecessarily Converting salt water to fresh water. This would definitely, I mean, this exists and would definitely um, help with the little bit of fresh water we have on earth and the tapping into it, causing uh, the replenish rate to uh, exceed the, which, or the withdrawal rate to exceed replenishment. This process is called desalination. Reverse osmosis is one of the um, ways to do it. The downfall to this is it's very expensive. Like any environmental uh, solution, it's usually very expensive until the technology gets advanced. But here's a picture right here of Dubai that should have been next. And they actually, obviously, it's a desert. So they have no water. They have ocean because it's a coastal desert. So they use desalination to produce half a billion gallons of water a day, which powers, I mean, not powers, but produces water for the whole city. You can also purify water with sunlight. So we could take any form of bottled water or, or wastewater, lay it in the sun for a certain amount of hours, and you actually will remove bacteria of this water. So it's direct purification, which means you're reusing instead of um, needing to tap in. Building dams. So all of these that I've talked about before are going to be solutions to uh, excessive water use or water consumption, unsustainable use of water. This is going to help us with flooding. So by building dams, you're actually um, controlling flooding. And that's the key because we're talking about solutions. But in addition, I put it here because it also is going to be able to um, have, you know, this water source, which is usually called a reservoir body of water because you need that for dams. 
that can be tapped into for irrigation or producing drinking water. Also, it's going to include um, improved reliable runoff, which will um, help with the regeneration of the water cycle. In terms of solutions to um, distribution, so water distribution is a problem. We know there's a lot of areas that don't receive any waters. They make tunnels and aqueducts and underground pipes. There's even transporting um, in specific low developed or less developed countries where women transport the water literally in barrels on top of their head across um, lands. But this would definitely help with areas that don't receive water. Wastewater treatment plant, I'm going to leave for 